Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Perspective. The depth of shock, pain and grief that is felt by us all, particularly the Muslim world as we watch what happens in Gaza every day, as we watch uh, the mothers hold their dying children every day, um, it is, it, and, and the, the grief that is felt in uh, the Muslim world, of course, is something that resonates all around us. Uh, the caretaker Prime Minister is, has left for Saudi Arabia to represent Pakistan at an emergency meeting of the OIC on the Gaza situation. We'll be talking about the ramifications of this meeting as the Muslim world meets to deliberate on uh, what's happening in Gaza um, as we see the sufferings of uh, the women, the children, the civilians um, that is unprecedented on so many levels. I have with me Dr. Manzoor Af Afridi, who is a foreign affairs expert. Thank you for being with us today. Pleasure. We also have with us Dr. Jameel Khan, who is a former ambassador. Thank you for joining us today. Um, I'm going to start with uh, Dr. Manzoor Ji. Dr. Manzoor, like I said, of course, you know, the, the, just the shock of what's happening, you know, of course, coupled with the grief, it's, you know, there's nothing to, it's unparalleled. There's, I don't think I'm wrong in saying this. And we see it and we watch the horrific images every day. This meet, of course, is something where we're going to, you know, the Muslim leaders are going to deliberate on, you know, whether, how soon and how, you know, we can influence whatever we can do for there to be a ceasefire immediately in Gaza. How do you look at this meet? How do you look at this, uh, you know, this deliberation that's going to happen? Of course, the caretaker prime minister has left and gone to attend this very important OIC meeting. Uh, definitely, I totally agree with you. Uh, what is happening there in uh, the uh, Gaza and uh, the, on the Palestine land. So uh, I think there are no words to express the brutality, the aggression and uh, the impunity of the Israeli forces against the innocent Palestinians. So uh, in this, uh, the so-called civilized world, it's very much silent. So this is very much, uh, um, uh, we can say, unfortunate uh, on the side of the, all the major powers. And where is the role of the United Nations, especially its uh, Security Council, where now more than 10,000 people, they are killed. And according to reports, uh, more than half of them, they are children so uh, why for example they are not humans uh, okay if they are Muslims if they are Arabs the if they are the this is the double, double standard, standard the okay. dual policy let me come back to you on that we also have with us Malia Lodi who's a former Pakistan ambassador at the UN G Malia can you hear me yes I can hear you G um, Malia there's you know of course uh, Saudi Arabia has convened this extraordinary summit of the OIC to discuss uh, the escalating situation in Gaza what are your expectations from this meeting well, I the aim would be to mount diplomatic pressure on the United States because the United States is the only country that Israel will respond to. Mm -hmm. And as you know, Israel has refused any kind of a ceasefire. And unfortunately, the Biden administration has conceded to Tel Aviv and also opposed a ceasefire. What they have proposed, but we don't have any official confirmation that Israel has even accepted this, is a humanitarian pause, which frankly is neither here nor there, because what it means is that there'll be four uh, pauses in the fighting, but that basically translates into the fighting and the bloodshed can continue for the rest of the 20 hours, and only four hours uh, the firing will stop. That frankly is just doesn't do anything to end the fighting, to end the bloodshed. In fact, the fighting is just on one side, it's Israel. Yes. that is waging war on the people of Gaza. Hmm. But Malia, there's, you know, the outcry all over the world. As, as you know, you are also watching, as we are all watching, you know, all over the world, we've, we've, we've seen the protests that, that have happened in Washington, in Europe, all over. Do you feel that there is, you know, the, the, the plight of the Palestinians, is, you know, their, their cries are perhaps resonating um, among you know civilians all over the world in a in, in an unprecedented manner would you agree with this you know regardless of yes, how the US no, there's, no, there's no question that the kind of solidarity that we see 
success for the Palestinians uh, by publics across the world, east and west, and in U.S. cities themselves. Uh, in New York, we saw a big demonstration. In Washington, an even larger one. And, of course, the biggest in London, repeatedly. So what we are seeing is Western governments are not listening to their own people. Western governments like the United States and the United Kingdom are still adamant in opposing a ceasefire. But what these public pro protests all over the world do mean is that they show or they lay bare the fact that the United States and Israel are isolated in among public across the world. Uh, the people do not support their policy and their position and their stance, and they are appalled and shocked and horrified by the fact that this killing of Palestinians is continuing in plain sight and that even hospitals are being targeted now by Israeli aggression and that civilians are dying by, I mean, they say uh, a a Palestinian child, one child dies every 10 minutes in Gaza. Over 11,000 Palestinians have been killed and have been martyred by Israel's uh, war on the people of Palestine. Malia, there is, you know, on the one hand, of course, there are the governments and the stance that they're taking, and like, you know, you also mentioned the public pressure at this time. Um, do you think it's going to make a difference at all, the kind of you know, economic interests being supreme, the kind of call for boycotts, for example, that we are looking at, uh, you know, over perhaps uh, uh, concerns that are funded uh, by Israel? Do you think things like this, that those things are going to make a difference? Well, I think there is mounting diplomatic pressure and dip mounting public pressure mm. on Washington. And it is because of that pressure that we see the United States even talk about a humanitarian pause. And it's also talking about the fact that Israel should not go and reoccupy Gaza. It's for, you know, it may be too little too late, but they're still now showing some concern, at least, for Palestinian casualties. So absolutely, I think both at the public level and at the government level, uh, the mounting of pressure uh, is very important. And as you said, I, I, we're all waiting to see what the OIC summit does because uh, the public in Muslim countries also expect their governments to take a much tougher position and to take a position which uh, leads to action uh, rather than just words. Do you think that overall, you know, of course, this, this underscores the double standard of the world? There's no question about it, right? Because... We are looking at uh, what, whatever, the, whether the U.S. wants to pin this on Hamas or not. The question is that the children that are dying in Gaza at this time, the women that are, you know, burying their children under the rubble that, you know, we, we've seen the images, we see them every day. Unfortunately, for the ineffectiveness of the United Nations also, this underscores those realities at a time when, you know, uh, perhaps the world and its sensitivity, its lack of sensitivity to what's happening uh, to children uh, in another land, like I said, the, the double standard that it exposes, uh, the politics of it, you know, how, what, what are your feelings about that? Well, first of all, that's nothing new. Uh, we know that Western countries who claim to be standard bearer of uh, human rights, who claim that they care about these issues, and they also sometimes say that they are pursuing uh, a foreign policy which is based on morality. Well, we've always known uh, that that was never true. Uh, their human rights concern is only focused on countries that they don't like or who, which are opponent countries or adversaries. Uh, so it's always been selected. There's nothing new. But what is so glaring now is that in the face of more than 11,000 people dead uh, by Israeli bombardment and the fact that innocent women and children and men uh, are being martyred every day, the West still thinks uh, that it has this uh, great uh, position uh, on a rule-based uh, international order, whereas we see that rule-based international order being undermined, violated 
uh, by uh, these uh, handful of Western countries themselves. And as far as the so United States the, is concerned, so then those glaring double standards of the West at this time are, you know, have they been exposed in an unprecedented manner like never before? No, I think they've always uh, been double standards. If they hadn't been double standards, then the resolutions that are in the on the UN, 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 the UN Security Council resolutions on both uh, Palestine and Kashmir would have been implemented. Why were they not implemented? There are dozens of them. On Kashmir, uh, there are 11. Uh, on uh, occupied Palestine, there are more than 70. So, you know, both General Assembly and Security Council. So why have they not been implemented all these years, for over 75 years? The reason is exactly what you are saying, which is double standards. They care about the human rights violations in other countries. But when it comes to Palestine or to occupied Kashmir, uh, the uh, silence descends upon them. But I think the point I wanted to also make, because you raised it, uh, which you, you said the UN is ineffective, it's not the UN that's ineffective. It is the big powers that are permanent members of the Security Council that have made the UN ineffective. So I think it's important to draw that distinction. And amongst the big powers, it is the United States today that stands in the way of a uh, you know, of bringing this war to an end, of bringing this bloodshed to an end. As you know, even today, the White House said that it is uh, not in favor, uh, as it put it, of a ceasefire now. I don't know what they mean by that. If they, if they mean that more civilian casualties should take place before a ceasefire is called, uh, frankly, you know, I, I, I think, uh, as the UN Secretary General rightly called this, this is not a humanitarian crisis. This is a crisis of humanity. That's what it is. Dr. Madia, I know that you know you have limited time, and I just want to ask this last question. As far as in your experience, do you think the kind of public pressure that we are seeing, is there any chance that that can make a difference to countries like the U.S.? Well, of course, public pressure does uh, play a role uh, in getting governments to you know revisit their policies. And as I said before, at this point in time, uh, the uh, U.S. Uh, government should be able to see how isolated they are uh, as far as the uh, publics are concerned, are concerned across the world, and that within their own country, uh, so many of these demonstrations uh, are signaling the fact that people do not approve of the line that they have taken. In fact, successive opinion poll surveys now show that the majority, over 60 percent of those uh, who were surveyed uh, in these polls uh, support a ceasefire which is obviously contrary to the position that the Biden administration yes. has adopted. Thank you so much, Dr. Malia. Thank you for being with us. Ji, Dr. Manzoor, we, you heard what uh, Dr. Malia Lodi also said. She's saying it's a crisis of humanity. Uh, there's little doubt about that. And uh, we are looking at, uh, again, a situation that's building up every day. Again, in your opinion, what do you expect from the OIC meeting tomorrow? Uh, this is important meeting because mm. it is summit in before there was extraordinary the ministerial level me meeting uh, which mm. held last month on 18th mm. uh, where the foreign ministers and they discussed the situation mm. arising from this Palestinian conflict and mm. from the Israeli aggression. So now this is uh, really important because heads of the states and heads of the uh, governments uh, um, of all the 57 uh, Muslim countries, they are participating and getting together. This is important because uh, OIC, it has its own permanent delegation in the United Nations, so it can also uh, uh, raise uh, the Muslim voice in the UN General Assembly to build their lobby and to convince other uh, member states, especially the big powers, to have some kind of concrete action against the Israeli aggression. Second, this OIC is also a delegation in European Union. So mm. European Union, uh, no doubt that uh, it is very much significant politically, militarily, and also economically. Mm. So uh, some powers like the UK and France, they are also um, in one way or the other, they are on the back of Israel. So those could uh, also be convinced in this regard. But what is important, uh, I think, uh, and I believe that within this uh, OIC uh, um, summit meeting, that uh, some other instruments of foreign policy, they, those should also be uh, 
uh, there uh, with the resolution or with the condemnation of YC. Let me come back to you on that. We have with us Dr. Jamil Khan, who is a former ambassador. G Dr. Jamil, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud and clear. Jamil, we are talking about the role of the OIC. We are talking about in this, you know, of course, this catastrophe that is unfolding in front of us every day. We are talking about the double standards of the West. We are talking about the public pressure, uh, you know, that seems to be building up against what um, Israel is doing in Gaza. In your opinion, you know, uh, of course, we we want an e immediate ceasefire at this time, and. That is what uh, the Muslim world is asking for. Do you think, you know, how, uh, what are the, in your opinion, um, is it going to be, what do you expect from this meeting uh, tomorrow? Well, I'm expecting the same thing what I expected and what was the outcome of uh, the summit and uh, of the conference which was called in, 19, in 2019, once the, um, they were shipping capital from Tel Aviv to Bath al -Makhdur. Um the same thing, same kind, you know. Uh, at that time, there was um, uh, resolutions, there were a very strong resolve that they would, um, uh, the, the Muslim, uh, the, all the 257 countries uh, condemned it very vehemently. And uh, this time also, they are going to condemn it very vehemently. Uh, the same what they did it last time and from that standpoint I would I feel that this time Pakistan has taken a very strong stand and uh, our Prime Minister during ECO meeting uh, while he uh, was there uh, he made a very strong statement which appears that uh, the other countries perhaps would tow uh, some uh, the, the line and uh, some of the points uh, we um, I'm expecting to be seen there um, uh, uh, during this uh, YC meeting. So, um, uh, and then Prime Minister was so vehement, so clear in his thoughts that the, uh, the, the lethal bombardment of Gaza, deplorable words like that, you know, and um, he also, on the 16th uh, uh, the summit of the uh, ECO meeting in uh, Uzbekistan, he did use the word condemnation with the United States and the other uh, permanent members of the you know, uh, U UN C uh, Security Council never used this word, rather they have vetoed whenever there was a resolution moved by other countries uh, uh, to condemn this. So from that standpoint, I think Pakistan and Pakistan Prime Minister has already uh, uh, given his mind and uh, uh, has uh, already uh, spelled it out very clearly. The, emotions and the feelings of the people of Pakistan. That's one part. Let's also underscore one point, that the entire world, the people of conscience, including Jews, and I must appreciate those Jews who are really taking out procession, and those Jews who are asking Israel, the, the Zionist government of Israel, that not in their name, uh, and this is against their religion, they are really taking out very strong processions and protests, including Central East Station of the New York, UK, and other places, they are demonstrating the same way. So this time, that bottom-up pressure is still is not working very well. Um, uh, the OIC meeting last time, once they had in uh, 2019, once uh, the capital was being shifted from uh, Tel Aviv to uh, 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 to Battle um, uh, uh, so at that time also they had used very strong wordings and those strong wordings uh, somehow did not really work that much. So this time I expect the condemnation. This time I would urge and I would really have my hopes Dr. against Jamil, the whole. There is, you know, there, there is overall as far as the narrative that earlier on, you know, Israel tried to spin. Would you agree that, you know, that it, it, it's been defeated all around? There is... You know, the, it's, it's miserably failed the way that they've tried to spin this, you know, regarding no, Hamas. Right. We are seeing an outcry all over the world. We are seeing call for boycotts. We are seeing, you know, uh, protests all over the world. So there doesn't, you know, there seems to be, the world seems to stand on one side. Uh, whereas, you know, we are looking at the double standards of the West on the other.
That's a, that that is quite established fact, you know. Double standard of the world. They haven't we seen it while uh, Iraq but was being invaded and while the, the Security West... Council, Ji. while the Security Council resolution was uh, really violated by the, um, the United States and other countries once they invaded Israel. Uh, don't we remember that uh, uh, was Afghanistan was invaded at that time also? Um, uh, the sentiments of the people and the, those huge protests which we had witnessed in millions of people in UK, in US, in other countries, that was not regarded and respected. So um, um, uh, this time in the OIC meeting, where our prime minister has really gone, a prime minister this time has taken a very strong stand, um, not only prime minister, but our common representative who is the... Uh, Dr. Jameel, on that note, I will come back to you on that note. I'm going to go to Fahim Al-Hamid, who's an Arab journalist. Thank you for being with us. Ji, Fahim, can you hear me? Yes, very much. I can hear you. Fahim, there is, you know, of course, no one can support the cause for the humanitarian, you know, the, the humanitarian pause that is being talked about. It doesn't mean anything. It's, no, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, it seems to be... Uh, it, it seems to be a measure that 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 is just going to uh, make to continue the the relentless uh, butchery, the relentless barbarity that is at play from the Israeli side. Uh, do you think that uh, uh, countries like the U.S. can be made to say that? Uh, can you repeat your your last portion? Uh, can I expect that the U.S. Can. G, Hello. G, Fahim, I'm saying that the call, you know, at this time, uh, the way that the U.S. is talking about humanitarian pause, it's not, you know, it it seems, it, it seems to be rather uh, a mockery of the kind of barbarity that we are seeing. You know, there is uh, a humanitarian pause is no solution to, uh, you know, the Very butchery true. that is at play. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. I can hear you. Uh, thank you very much for having me with the, with the respected guest. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, yes, I totally agree with you. Not only that, but the humanitarian angle, the United States thinking, they are thinking about their own nationality. They are only thinking about the foreign nationality because unfortunately they are considering the the the, the Palestinians are sorry to say that as unhuman and animal. And this is the gravity of the situation. Uh, United States has proven uh, again and again that uh, they are not democratic at all. And they are, you know, jalad, the slaughter. You know, they are uh, equalizing between jalad, the slaughter, and the victim. And they are wholeheartedly supporting the Zionism and the barbarism and the Israeli hegemony in this part of the world. Yes, you are 100% right. And... Uh, United States, if they think that they will go with 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 the the, the safe passage for the, the the American, they are, I think, uh, uh, not going to to succeed because you know they may their national go through the 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 sea land. They want to open the rough. Uh, for 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 the American, so I don't think that will be possible. So we are human, all human beings, but you know, the Americans has to realize that they are human beings. There is also millions of human beings is being butchered and in pieces in Gaza. Right, fair enough. Let me let me come back to you for him. I think there's a slight distortion in audio. Gee, Dr. Manzoor, you heard what uh, uh, Fahim al Hamid said and Dr. Jamil also. I want to talk about the, uh, you know, of course, uh, 
again, as far as Israel is concerned, the kind of narrative that they have tried to spin and the fact that, of course, it's not working for them. Um, at this time, for, for America to talk about, for the US to talk about humanitarian force, it's also contradictory to any kind of humanity. Like uh, Malia said, you know, it's, it's a crisis of humanity at this time. Do you think that, you know, the again, I think it's very important, the kind of pressure that's building up is going to hold sway with the world? Uh, uh, we want uh, to have uh, that ceasefire and uh, for the, uh, you know, for the time being and for the long lasting solution uh, and long lasting durable peace, that is the two state solution, hmm. uh, which is also on the agenda of the OIC. Because when we talk about what's happening at this time you know we can't just talk about what's happened from 7th of october yeah it it's actually years and years before the palestinians have been suffering for you know it is it is the oldest and the long standing conflict on the table of the un security council very much unfortunate mm -hmm. let me tell you that uh, even united states it used 15000 tons ammunition in the world war 2 and this israel mm -hmm. it has used 30000 uh, you know, 30,000 tons of ammunition uh, in these few days, in mm. just a month. So this is uh, a barbaric action from the uh, Israel side. So no one is going to stop it. I was talking that uh, uh, OIC meeting summit mm. that is important, but only condemnation, it will not work because mm. we have seen uh, over the episodes and for the so many decades that condemnation and okay call for boycott not to buy when the products about, right when we talk about uh, you know th the state of gaza when we talk about the state of palestine their status you know we know for a fact now you know for, for israel is the occupier mm. and for the for the people of gaza for the people of palestine you know, it, it's simple, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, you know, they say that it's their land, and they they want to claim their own land. For them, it's it's a very clear uh, stance no that they've, they've always taken. Yeah. And for that, you know, for the world to, to, to not heed to that, it's been years and years and years. Now, you know, from the 7th of October, there is this escalation that we are looking at. Actually, the conflict is very old. Conflict is old. So many negotiations held. The Kim David Eckert, uh, um, uh, you know, it was there. The um, various U.S. presidents, uh, Jimmy Carter, the Bill Clinton, mm. they have tried, mm. but nothing fruitful uh, came out from all these negotiations. Mm. Then Antifada started, and all the, the three major wars in 1948, 1967, 1973. So it is, I mean, 75 years old dispute, rather conflict, right? And so many thousands, uh, hundred thousands hmm. killings have been done. Hmm. And uh, no doubt that Israel is occupier. So if we see, you know, from back to 1967 and 73, if we go there, look to the land of Israel how much Israelis, they, they had the, their time, the land. Mm. And now look that how much they have annexed by force. They have occupied, so they are occupiers. They are colonial, that is colonial power. So if somebody says that no, now there is no colonialism, there is mm. no physical colonialism. Mm. So this is the glaring example, and it is the biggest example how and what Israel is doing against the Palestinians. They are, you know, by each passing day, they are grabbing the land of Palestinians. So it is very much natural. I think even animals, and they will also react. So they are humans. They have to react. And they are reacting over time and time. But nobody is going to listen to them. That is the main tragedy. And what Israel is, is, is doing, that is the genocide in this 21st century, in this integrated world, and this so-called civilized world. There's little doubt about that. I will come back to you. I'm going to go to Dr. Jamil Khan. Dr. Jamil, the efficacy of these boycotts, how, how would you rate them? Do you think they're going to, you know, there's, is there any chance that this measures like these can, can yield some results for the Palestinian people? OIC members, 57 countries, if they boycott it in block, that would definitely make a difference. If they boycott about the products of the 
uh, Israel and its associated companies. It would definitely make a difference. Why it has not made any difference so far is that the Security Council Resolution 1397, which is um, which was passed in two uh, 2002, and that clearly dilates upon two-state um, solution. And that two-state solution, it emerged from the Oslo Accord in, of 1993. But there was no um, uh, implementation of it. And then there was a road map which was drawn uh, by the, uh, with the Security Council Resolution 1515, where the roadmap was drawn to implement that peace plan. But what to talk of other people, you know? And there are so many other resolutions, which uh, what Malia was also saying. I have all those in my head. But, you know, let me save the time of um, your, your viewers and yourself. I uh, uh, must draw the attention of one uh, on, on one point that Israel, in its official document, as a foreign policy and as their internal policy, they say that this entire land is theirs. So, and then our permanent representative, I'm giving you the evidence, our permanent representative, Manir Akram, he yesterday said that Israel is stepping towards the Greater Israel. And Greater Israel concept was laid back in 1897, once the Zionism uh, the movement and the start of the Zionism movement was established in Switzerland. And then on the basis of that, 1948, Israel was constituted. Once there was very few population was not as much. Now, after the after violation of uh, Security Council Resolution 2334, uh, which was passed in 2016, stating that there shouldn't be any settlement any more settlement in Palestinian land, but then they continue doing that. And today, what what is happening now? That's brutality. That that uh, butchering of the people around uh, in the face of the entire world is a blatant violation of the human right, blatant violation of international law, blatant violation of the Security Council resolution. Everything is happening right in front of the entire world. Okay, fine enough. People in various right, countries. Dr. Jameel, let me let me come back to you. I'm going to go to Fahim Al Hamid, and then I will come back to you. G. Fahim, of course, you know we are looking at uh, Saudi Arabia hosting the OIC on this very very important issue, and you know what, what what do you expect from this meeting, and what do you you know overall as the Muslim countries unite and on this you know the the again like I said the barbarity the butchery that is at play. And as we see the double standards of the West, uh, you know, in this flagrant manner, what do you expect from this meeting? Well, uh, you know, thank you for going back to the main uh, subject of this program. Uh, as we know that you know, Saudi Arabia is going to host tomorrow an emergency. Uh, the day after an emergency meeting of Islamic countries, tomorrow also we are having an Arab uh, uh, Arab summit emergency. In fact, Saudi Arabia is is, is taking the lead here uh, because of its responsibility as the Muslim leader and Arab leader. Uh, Saudi Arabia, from day one, has exerted its full I mean uh, effort for for the ceasefire, for the opening of its blockade, to have a safe passages to to, to humanitarian. And uh, you know, uh, relief and, and medication. Saudi Arabia has has made uh, you know a campaign for uh, you know gathering uh, and supporting uh, the, the the Palestinian people. Uh, fundraising, which really is to have billion Saudi real. But uh, as we told you, Saudi Arabia uh, has. Uh, invited all 52 countries of the Muslim Ummah and 22 countries from the Arab Ummah to, to to sit together and to talk transparently, very frankly, how could Muslim Ummah and Arab can uh, find out an immediate solution to this crisis. This crisis has only two ways. There is no third way. Peace 
expires and opening the border for relief. We as Arab and Muslim Ummah have no power to, to pressurize United States or Israel or the United States. I need to be very frank and honest with all of you. We can only work to open the safe havens, safe passages, open the border, let's eat, come, let's food come. Maybe you will ask me how come this time they would be no, no, no ceasefire. It's very just a question. We have to open safe passages even we were seeing the ambulances carrying dead bodies and they were being bombarded by the, Amer uh, by the Israeli fighters. So let the war see when the, uh, the relief organization and, and the, you know, uh, those, uh, I mean, uh, you know, agencies being bombarded. So let's the world see the, 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 the criminality and the barbarism of this. Saudi Arabia is taking the lead. I would expect, I would expect that from the summit as a, a ministerial meeting, Arab ministerial meeting, Islamic ministerial meeting will go to United Nations and to meet five member, uh, permanent member, and put the case directly to them and uh, to show to the world that how the superpowers are equalizing between slaughter and the victim. Thanks very much. Let me, let me come back to you. I'm going to go to Dr. Manzoor Afaridi. T, Dr. Manzoor, you heard what uh, uh, Fahim Al Hamid is saying, you know, what our expectation is from this summit. Uh, you know, superpower or not, the role that the U.S. is playing at this time, uh, you know, the inhuman role, the, the, you know, the kind of watching blatantly, um, I don't think it would be wrong to say aiding the kind of butchery that is happening at this time, you know, the support for Israel. Like, uh, you know, Malia also said, the only one, the country that's going to make a difference at this time, that is choosing not to, that is choosing not to stand on the right side of history at this time. Um, of course, we are looking at measures, we are looking at protests, we are looking at, you know, the kind of pressure that is building up, and we hope that there will be, you know, some kind of, something will, will, you know, change here, and we are hopeful for that. But in the meantime, the kind of, uh, you know, uh, the kind of aid at this time, the kind of, because initially, of course, even aid was not being let, let mm. through, you mm. know. Um, what what are your expectations from that? Are things going to improve there at all? Do you think you know there are chances now of perhaps getting more aid through than earlier? Uh, I hope so. Uh, that uh, more aid, uh, humanitarian aid uh, in food and uh, medical uh, supply, mm -hmm. all these uh, would be restored and uh, will be uh, increased uh, in coming days. But as far as the summit is concerned, uh, that uh, all the important uh, states of uh, OIC, I think they have strong ties with the United States. So they can individually, uh, they can do something, uh, um, you know, so when, so when the, a summit like this happens where, you know, of course, there's a united voice against what Israel is doing, that, you know, that will have its own effect, that will resonate, uh, you know, on, on some level with uh, the, with, you know, with the world. Yeah, and, and I, the I, I, I already pointed out that uh, this OIC has permanent delegation in the UN uh, General Assembly and also uh, in uh, um, uh, you know in European Union also it has uh, you know uh, special contact group with uh, China China is also very much interested uh, and also with India it has uh, ties so in this regard uh, it can create uh, something uh, you know positive to happen mm. and this uh, boycott of the Israeli products 
or companies are associated with the, those Israeli companies. All other associations mm -hmm. or companies or firms, they can be boycotted in this regard. So an economic pressure that can be built. And important thing, I think, more important, that is also to make lobbies in the world. And uh, every country and the every capital, uh, especially those capitals who matter in international politics, to create lobbies within mm -hmm. the journalists, within the politicians, uh, in academic circles. And, and to build and galvanize support for this cause also. Uh, yeah. You know, it's going to it's going to play its role very yeah, effectively there. Yeah, main thing of the lobbies is, uh, you know, mm. to gain support. Mm. And that is very much necessary. So uh, I hope so that it will create something positive in this direction, that it will, uh, you know, stop the Israeli aggression. And then the major powers uh, and most important, that is the United States. It, uh, may think about it that even its own role that can be jeopardized and uh, now even, even fingers they are pointed towards the U United States role and even in future uh, it can be da damaged more if it continues on the same path. So the dual st standard, the double policy uh, and all this hypocrisy how they are doing, uh, if, if it stops then peace it can prevail over there. Let me go to Dr. Jamil. Dr. Jamil, what about its own people? You know, of course, it's it's a it's a it it's, it means a lot of you know for the government itself. It means a unpopularity with its own people because you know again the rallies in New York, Washington, all over as far as the U.S. is concerned. Uh, does that make a difference? Well, it would definitely make a difference, and it's for this reason that now the Democrats feel that this would have an implication in the forthcoming election in the United States, not only in the United States, in other countries also. Those uh, parties who are in power, they are definitely considering that. But at the same time, we must not uh, ignore the very strong Zionist lobby in all these countries. And uh, uh, they, they have to trade off the balance between Zionist lobby. And if I could give you the example of what happened while um, the capital of uh, United States and capital of Israel was being shifted to Al Quds, uh, shifted to Al Quds Al Sharf, uh, Jerusalem. Uh, now, at that time, the uh, same kind of uh, extraordinary session under Article 9 of the OIC was called for. And what they passed the resolution, I still distinctly remember. And I can just refresh the memory of your viewers and uh, uh, yourself that the they, they, they emphasize that the purpose and objective and the principle of OIC charter that would be that would prevail for the causes of Islam and Muslim and the spirit of genuine solidarity. And then they also emphasize that, uh, that, that the Palestine and the Al Quds and Al Sharf they re reaffirm their support to Palestinian people uh, to uh, regain their independence and the sovereign uh, uh, and and uh, for their sovereign state and also for their self self determination they did that they condemned at that time the decision of israelis to uh, shift their uh, the, the capital from tel aviv to jerusalem and in that in at that time they also cited the security council resolution that they could not do that but the united states few more countries and Israel, they are still there. They didn't really heat, uh, pay any heat to it. And then in the same uh, joint communique, the OIC recalled the Security Council Resolution 2334, which, uh, and then they asked Israel to stop further, um, uh, 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 further illegal uh, occupation practices. And that is in their para eight of the same communique what happened in 1999. So why I'm giving you all these examples. There's no doubt that there, there, you know, we are seeing resolutions flouted left, right and center, uh, you know, more than 70, according to Malia, like she said, you know, have been blatantly flouted as far as uh, resolutions of the UN Security Council are concerned. Um, we have, I, I want to go to Fahim and ask him for a quick comment um, on what his hope is from tomorrow. G, Fahim. What we are hoping for tomorrow? Hello. Hello. G, you, what, what, is, what is your expectation? What is your hope from tomorrow? 
Well, in fact, you know, uh, you know, every leader has to take responsibility. It's not one man show. It's a collective uh, movement. It's a collective decision. 22 heads of state, 55 heads of state of Islamic uh, Ummah, they are gathering. Saudi Arabia, they are hosting, and they are the leader. Certainly, uh, the world, uh, the, the Islamic uh, leader, the Arab leader will hear tomorrow the speech. The Arab leader tomorrow and the day after the Islamic leader will hear the point view of Saudi Arabia from our crown prince who will be uh, chairing uh, the both summit on behalf of the king. And our uh, Saudi Arabia stand is very clear as, as, as it is of Pakistani stand or OIC stand or Arab. Now we need to know how to move. Saudi Arabia would like to start the movement from where we have to move tomorrow. What will be our roadmap to convince the, the, those powers who are treating the the superpower who are treating uh, the, the 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 Palestinian as sorry as animal? How we can uh, put pressure? Go meet the Congress people, meet the House of Lords members, go to United Nations, go to e uh, European Community member, and tell them that this is the situation. And I would suggest that they should take with them some part of the dead body of, of, of the children and let them show by themselves if Palestinian delegation can take some part of that dead body and throw it in their face and tell them, you know, shame on you. This is, I can say, uh, yes, sister. Unfortunately, but, that's all the time that we have. Thank you for being with us. Uh, thank you for your very valuable input. Dr. Manzoor Afridi, thank you for joining us. Malia Lodi, thank you for being with us. Dr. Jamil Khan, thank you for joining us on this very important topic. Of course, uh, we will know with the meeting tomorrow, the OIC. Pakistan um, has, uh, you know, is resolved to do whatever we can. Uh, uh, the caretaker prime minister is there to attend the OIC on this very, very important topic. Um, addressing the situation in Gaza, what measures, you know, overall uh, uh, the Muslim world as they watch the double standards of the West, um, as we watch uh, bodies being pulled out of the rubble, as we watch children dying every day, as we watch the situation in Gaza get worse and worse, as we watch uh, utilities like water being stopped. We it is, it is certainly a crisis of humanity um, and uh, as we watch uh, all of this catastrophe unfold in front of us, we hope that um, the West will see, we hope that the US will see that there is only one immediate solution and that is ceasefire. Um, we are hopeful of course and uh, we know that uh, the, there will be all efforts are being made as far as the OIC meeting is concerned on this very important topic, uh, you know, to galvanize all efforts to address, again, the brutality that is at play in Palestine. Thank you so much for joining us today on Perspective.